Time goes by, years and decades. She comes, she goes, but her story remains so. She is you, I and the others. She belongs to herself and not another. She is whole, complete and absolute. For she is resolute. Hello and welcome to She is Resolute. I'm your host Subarna and our endeavor on this show is to showcase conversations of grit and growth for the determined modern woman willing to take complete ownership of her life and her mindset. Our attempt is to bring to the fore actionable information on personal development through discussions with experts and personalities who have in one way or another proven that they too are resolute. So enjoy the episode and please do like, share and subscribe. Our guest today is exactly what you what you would imagine when you think of a yogini and a teacher. Radiant, positive, exuding calmness, and beautiful inside and out. We have with us today Shani Dayal, an accomplished yoga teacher running her own very successful virtual yoga studio, Shani Yoga, and an admired and loved health and wellness influencer. She has led many retreats, workshops, and classes with corporations and individuals around the world with the noble aim to spread the knowledge of yoga among her students so that they can lead a healthy life. Though Shani is a qualified architect, she realized that teaching yoga is her calling and is devoted to help her students to not only have fun, but also get healthy and live well. In her words, healthy and conscious living and making yoga accessible to everyone is my life's motto. We are so happy to have with us today, Shani Dayal. Thank you so much for joining us, Shani. Thank you so much, Suvarna, and uh, thanks a lot for the lovely introduction. <laughs> and it is really my pleasure to be here. Great. We're so excited to learn from you today. So I'm going to jump right into the questions. Uh, let's start from yeah. the beginning. When were you introduced to yoga and how did it become like such an integral part of your life? Uh, so um, I tried yoga as a kid when my parents would push me to yoga classes uh, because, you know, uh, it's such a common thing in our uh, uh, Indian households. Yoga is literally a part of life and especially when you look back to our parents and grandparents. So I was also introduced that time, but obviously I had no interest. I would just, you know, I, all I remember from then is just sleeping in Shavasana and just suddenly waking <laughs> up, realizing that everyone's up. Uh, but then, um, and then I went on to pursue architecture. Um, I was not at all an active person. I literally didn't do anything. No physical activities were involved. And then I went on to take a architecture job after passing out. So it was then when I started to experience, like my body was slowly starting to giving up, you know, um, mm. I used to get, um, headaches and dryness in the eyes. I used to experience, um, you know, back aches and shoulder pains, you know, all those things which re really come with the nine to six job. And that is right. when I started looking at some simple online videos to just stretch. And uh, I mean, it might si sound very simple, but um, I somehow it really attracted me. I kind of downloaded an app and I started practicing with that. I didn't know like uh, which it is important to really go to a teacher. Uh, that um, understanding I got much later because that time I was just trying to ease my pain, you know, and get out of those right. uh, physical discomforts. But then slowly and slowly, I started to practice on my own. And I, I really started to enjoy that, uh, you know, me time on my mat and really do for myself. So uh, I would say that was the time that was a transition phase, like six to seven years back when I really got hooked on to the practice. Um, and yeah, and from then uh, to now, it's, uh, it's a very contrast on the, even the kind of work that I'm doing. That right. time it was um, a desk job. And uh, now it is, um, yeah, I'm teaching yoga. <laughs> so that is basically that, how it began. It's incredible because like you've transitioned from being a qualified architect, having your own design studio, and then you've completed your 200 hour teacher training to become, you know, a qualified yoga teacher yeah uh, that is truly truly commendable uh, so how did you make that transition to teaching yoga full-time and what challenges did you face through this transition because you know when people hear that okay a transition from something mainstream to something that people don't consider mainstream mm -hmm. 
um, it's often a challenge. So how did you overcome those challenges and how was the transition for you? Yeah. Um, so actually the transition actually started to happen when, like I said, I really was drawn towards the practice and I really right. wanted to dive a little deeper into it. I realized that yoga is not just a physical practice. It's so much more to it. So that is when I decided to do teacher training. I thought that maybe I'll understand a little more. Uh, I had no intention to teach at that time. It was just a course to, for my own understanding, um, but then after that, I completed the course and, you know, one of my friends was like, oh, you, you know, you can take class at my studio or something like that. It literally like began like that. For me, teaching especially began like that. Uh, okay. It was not at all planned. And uh, from then I slowly started to, uh, I just started taking uh, three classes in a week uh, in my own design studio in the morning. So by the morning, oh, it used nice. to be a yoga studio. And uh, after that, we used to switch to, you know, um, doing the architecture work there. Um, and it was actually in the lockdown when um, that big transition happened. Obviously, before that also, everyone, you know, kept saying that um, you're teaching and this and that. It's very different uh, the way you explain things and you're in knowledge and everything. Uh, my students used to enjoy my classes, but it was then the lockdown began. Uh, when my husband literally, like, I still remember there was this day when he made me sit and he was like, um, you know, Shani, you have to decide now because architecture is a hundred percent thing and yoga became my passion. So that right. also, I wanted to be there also and there because I did uh, enjoy architecture and just, I've like invested 10 years of my life in that. So, you know, it is not something so easy to give up. Uh, but right. then he said that this is a time for you to decide because you can't do both. Um, so I still like there was this apprehension. I was like, hmm, I'll take classes, but then obviously I'll uh, go to the office also. Um, but then slowly uh, my online classes kind of picked up. Uh, people started joining and uh, they also, my students started to feel difference, started to benefit wow. from the practice. Uh, and it was then and slowly and slowly not very slowly it literally was a span of one two or maybe three months when I decided okay this is what I'm going to be doing um so that was the transition and like challenges like you said of uh, being an architect a mainstream job to a yoga teacher I still hear a lot of my not our generation but my parents friends you know like they'd be like oh yoga teacher because you know they just feel anyone can do yoga right <laughs> and uh, they're like you why why I mean from there to there for them yoga teaching yoga is something so you know normal I mean what what is so unique about it so but obviously for me uh, it is much more I just think that maybe they are not aware of uh, uh, the whole uh, picture and also uh, for me it's about following my passion so I really don't listen to that all of the, those critiques a lot um, Absolutely. Apart, yeah apart from that I think one challenge I my family is very very supportive so that way I'm very blessed um, I we stay in a joint family so there was no space literally for me to teach in the right. house you know you need a proper space and so I used to teach at the corner of my uh, drawing room I used to shift so far every time we, there was a class and I shift used to shift them back so, you know, these are the small <laughs> things, but everyone is really supportive. And, uh, and I think the biggest challenge was my own mindset. Shifting from there to here and just leaving everything which I had built up on for 10, 11 years. And, uh, you know, studying architecture, it's a gruesome course, five-year-long course. And just yeah. giving up on that. So I think that uh, it was, mm, the biggest challenge for me was the mindset. And... Uh, but then I really loved what I did, uh, you know, uh, teaching yoga. You make, it or... <laughs> you make it sound simple. You make it sound simple, but it's actually a pretty difficult thing to do, um, particularly in the mindsets that we've grown up with when there's something mm -hmm. um, very traditional in terms of a profession that we see. And then yeah. suddenly when we want to start following our passion, which is not something that of is often pursued and is often mm -hmm. viewed as an alternate profession, there are always going to be mental hurdles and also hurdles. Even That's with right. a supportive family, there are going to be uh, hurdles in perception, the societal perception of why are you doing this? So you Absolutely. make it sound easy, but it's, it's a very difficult thing to do. And I commend you for doing that and doing it so successfully. 
Uh, coming to uh, the, you mentioned that you started yoga because it was a pain point for you, and uh, that was pretty much how you started exploring it in your, um, you know, adult life. But now that you've been in this for nearly, I would say, nearly a decade now, mm. uh, nearly seven to eight years now. Yeah, so that's right. So I would like to understand what does yoga mean to you, and what positive transformations have you observed in your body and mind through years of, you know, skilled practice. Right. Uh, so obviously, yoga started for me as just a physical practice of asana. Uh, uh, obviously, it helped me to get over all those physical discomforts. I used to have this major digestive issues. Those kind of like fell in place. Uh, but apart from that, I really feel that it has made me a much more conscious person in the sense to lead a conscious living. Um, I'll just try to explain that. Um, you know, when when I time when I spend my time on the mat, um, slowly and slowly you start to become aware of your body. I I feel yoga practice is a journey of self um, understanding. You get to know yourself and understand yourself better. So uh, the first thing that you uh, uh, you know notice is the physical physical aspect right. of your body, right? Uh, so you become physically aware of your body, and that also helps in a multi in multiple ways. I'll just give you a small example. For example, um, posture. When whenever people sit, they sit like this, right? right? Because they're not aware of their posture. It's just a simple correction of the posture. So physically, with the practice of yoga, you become more aware of your physical, and uh, you kind of break those small habits. And these right. are these habits that we pick up which um, in long term can, can have problems, can cause diseases, etc. Right. But apart from the physical, there's a much deeper, you know, emotional and, phys uh, and um, even your thoughts. Uh, when you become aware of your thoughts and emotions, you start to right. realize that even those things are not really you. They are all affected from outside. And I'll just right. give again an example for me, for everyone, it's different for me. Like there are certain poses which I just love. Like I just, oh, I, I love doing this pose. But then there are some poses which I run away from. And these yeah. are just physical poses. Physical poses are able to generate thoughts and emotions in the body. And yeah. why is that? Right? So for me, I've just started to understand that um, you, may feel, you may feel sad at some time. You may feel happy sometime. But it is not something which is coming from outside. Most of these, um, our senses are always fed from outside. So right. when you kind of get that understanding, um, it's not like I don't feel happy or sad at times, but it's just that I'm able to divide and I'm able to think a little more uh, logically and from an outer person's perspective at a problem or at a, at a situation that, has, that is causing those emotions and thoughts in me. Um, so for, uh, obviously this is a thing. And then there are multiple things like, uh, you, when you know yourself better, you eliminate and you reinforce those qualities, which right. help you lead a better life or lead you towards your goals. So right. your self discovery is something which has really, um, I feel this is one of the most important things that I've gained from my practice. I couldn't agree more. I mean, uh, we spend a lot of our time not being self-aware and sometimes even subconsciously knowing that, you know, this is not right or this is not going well for me, but we just bury it or at some point of time it becomes a defense mechanism. And we start saying, we start, you know, carrying that with pride. Oh, I'm, I do X, Y, Z, or I sleep in mm -hmm. late or I sleep or I do this or I do that, or that's who I am. And we're not willing to change that. So I think self-awareness is the first step to positive transformation. If you Absolutely. want to get any sort of positive transformation, self-awareness is so important. And it's so heartening to hear that, you know, you're on that journey and uh, yoga helped you do that. And I'm sure yoga is one of those things. I've personally, unfortunately, not had the chance to practice yoga. I've been inspired by you. So I'm certainly going to be taking that up. But now that we're talking about you, I would like to understand, like I was seeing your, uh, you know, the kind of message that you put out on your page and you also talk about the importance of habits. So mm -hmm. what are your five non-negotiable daily habits that help you lead a healthy and conscious life? Um, again, this is some habits or rituals, I would like to say that way. So right. this is, uh, um, I never had any ritual like that. You know, I used to just wake up every day doing different things, sleep in a different way, different time every time. 
But then slowly yeah. and slowly I've realized how important it is to really follow certain habits which keep you connected and keep you grounded. Now when right. I literally look at my elders, my granddad, he wakes up in the morning, he's 97 and he always makes his own tea, no matter what. Then he'll get up and he'll go for a walk, he'll wear his, he'll wear his uh, sports shoes, he'll pick up a few flowers, take a bath, put those flowers on the mandir. So, you know, these are the small things which uh, really keep you connected and grounded. So, and uh, for me, the habits that I have kind of picked up and stick on to are um, waking up early. Uh, right. I was never a very late sleeper or, you know, something like that. But with this practice, I've realized how important and how good I feel when I wake up early. And I just manage so many things in the morning when still people are sleeping in the house. Wow. Um, the th next thing is um, uh, I also follow a sleep routine. Like um, right. just before going to ba bed, I would, uh, you know, massage my feet, do a couple of stretches, dim down the lights. I really like to light up some candles, put some fairy lights which are in the room. You know, just to set up that mood because sleep is so important and we Absolutely. kind of sometimes we don't even pay attention to it. We just uh, look at phone and fall asleep like that. And that is something oh which I surely don't like. Um, yeah. So, you know, just following these small rituals in the night. Then uh, one thing which I obviously stick on to is my practice, no matter uh, it may be literally five minutes of uh, doing simple pranayam and just sit, simply sitting in quietness, just be with yourself. Or it can be like one, one and a half hours of practice on, uh, on a wow. mat. So my practice wow. is something which I don't, um, you know, uh, there's no way out of it. And um, I think one habit which I have started to really enjoy is making my own breakfast. I wow. really feel that something that if uh, you start a day with a healthy breakfast, it keeps me going through the day. If I don't yeah. have my good breakfast, I'll feel hungry. I'll feel, um, you know, I just won't be in that zone. And yeah. uh, making just, just taking our time, looking at the plate. And I, I like to decorate it also. So, you know, if I'm making a smoothie, <laughs> I would decorate it and actually have it. Uh, nice. So, yeah, I mean, all the meals in the day are important. But for me, breakfast is something which is really, really important. And uh, yeah, so just take out time for yourself. I, I've realized that it's very important to think of yourself because in our hushed up and hurry, this uh, these days life is just, just so, it's so fast. Everything yeah. is moving so fast. With the social media, you know, you wake up and the first thing is you're like scrolling through stories. So yeah. it's just important to, you know, get uh, take a step back yeah take a step back and just connect with yourself uh, such key uh you know habits that you've mentioned that, that everyone can benefit from i'm a big on trying to understand um you know behavioral traits that can help you with longevity and basic mental um you know stability and uh, Everything that you said is based in neuroscience from what I have, the little, you know, reading that I've done on neuroscience and the body and the neurobiology, everything is so, so key, like sleeping, uh, having a sleeping routine, not viewing blue light post 10 p.m. are so important for your mental health. It uh, totally offsets your, uh, you know, neurochemical uh, balance if you're constantly looking at and getting those dopamine hits from Instagram or viewing yeah. blue light it messes up with your circadian rhythm. Waking up early is, I think, such a challenge for so many people, including me. It took me a while to get to a point where I could come to a morning routine. I always took pride in being a night owl. So <laughs> it is the bad assist thing that you could do if you can wake up in the morning and like sort out your day. That's the best thing that you can do for yourself. Again, a very, very important uh, you know, habit. And making breakfast, like it, it sounds something that most people do, but it's actually such a nourishing, soul nourishing and mental nourishing, uh, yeah. you know, habit. Very therapeutic. Yeah. Very therapeutic. So again, mm. amazing, amazing pointers that you've given. I think we can all learn from that. And, you know, since we're talking about health um, and in your experience of teaching women and young girls, what are the common health issues that women face? And how important is yoga for women and girls, young girls? Actually, from all the questions that I receive, uh, I do have uh, most of the students uh, 
in my classes are women and most of the questions okay. even on instagram that i receive are regarding hormonal health mm. which um, you know it's literally like one of the most most asked question hormonal health and uh, i always and you know it's the hormones is something which is it is such a delicate balance anything right. on and off like your anything in your lifestyle it's such a big word lifestyle it's from your sleep your diet your small sort of things and anything and everything can you know affect your hormonal balance um right. hormonal balance you know your energy your mood your um your your gut health your digestion your growth you know all of this you don't even realize that even the even your mood and emotions are all yes. hormones so i always like uh, i like this phrase of uh, just explaining it this way that hormones are the puppeteers and we are the puppets like they literally like pull the strings and um, we don't even realize we, we just you know uh, function according to that uh, right. and yoga uh, it definitely helps in maintaining hormonal balance hormonal health because uh, one thing one key trigger to hormonal imbalance is stress right and uh, we don't even realize uh, like i would deny uh, saying that i have stress but uh, sometimes the stress can be very visible sometimes it's not very visible even mm. overthinking of mind and constantly thinking of things here and there they might be happy thoughts or, or not so happy thoughts but if your mind is constantly working in that way even that can cause like stress in the body and mind uh, right. that can cause physical pains um so yoga helps uh, in definitely in managing stress there are breathing exercises which helps to relax the mind and the body um there is direct there are direct asanas which stimulate the endocrine glands to yeah. improve the function of the glands and uh, like i said uh, like for me how the growth has been of uh, conscious living or being aware of what you're doing so even the food choices that you make even when you wake up and sleep all these things you get to you become just more mindful of these things yeah. you eliminate yeah. those things from your diet which are not suiting you and you include those things which are nourishing you so right. um apart from the time that you're spending on the mat and the asana and the breathing practice and the meditation that you're doing even uh, through the day you can carry on these things that you learn on the mat right yeah. and uh, that is really uh, that is something which can help in greatly in hormonal health that's wonderful and such a uh, powerful benefits um and again now this is a question that i have personally always thought of i have been somebody who works out in the gym so my mm-hmm. <laughs> idea of working out is very different where it's more about weight training and you know so i've never really explored yoga and one of the myths that i have around yoga is that it's not uh, well suited for weight training or strength and conditioning so going by that ignorance can you tell us about some common myths about yoga yeah so uh, i think the the biggest uh, myth or misconception is that yoga is just asana practice that is mm. number one um there is a uh, there may be people who never step on the mat and they are the biggest yogis right um yeah. because ultimate goal of yoga is to understand yourself and self realization is the ultimate goal of yoga so even if you're spending like 5 to 10 minutes every day in just internalizing or maybe focusing on your breath simple things like that even that is a part of yoga even that is a yogic practice so um and um so yeah obviously yoga is much more than the physical asana practice which yeah. I, i always thought uh, it was uh, but even if you are just focusing on the asana practice i myself do hit the gym uh, mm-hmm. at least once or twice a week and i think the balance can be really well maintained one big myth that i hear is i'm not flexible i can't do yoga or i'm mm. not patient i can't do yoga <laughs> i'm not patient <laughs> enough for yoga because in yoga you have to hold poses but uh, it is that holding the poses for longer durations of time is what really uh, gives the it, it it for that is first of all makes yoga different from any other form of exercise yes. and secondly that is uh, this fact itself has um the the main benefits of yoga as actually realized 
by the fact that the poses are held for longer and if yes. you are a person that who can't concentrate or don't have the patience then i would say you definitely need to try yoga <laughs> to balance it out it's all about yeah. trying to maintain that balance if something is too much you have to bring it down if something is too less you have to bring it up and try and maintain that balance and flexibility is definitely just a byproduct of yoga i mean uh, it's just about you uh, optimizing your body movements optimizing and bringing the best in your body uh, as a kid or uh, if you see a small kid uh, he yeah. can touch his toes he can put his foot <laughs> in the mouth so we were that flexible i'm not saying that we all have to do that but it's just uh, optimizing your body movements and uh, mobility in the body absolutely yes. i mean that's given me the motivation to also try and you know mix up yoga into my routine uh, i have been thinking about it so thank you uh, at least i'm pushed over the edge <laughs> to try and and for people who are watching this please uh, go and have a look at shani's website um it's shaniyoga.com right yeah yes yes she has some really good uh, classes and uh, you know memberships you must uh, check it out if you've been contemplating starting the practice now this is a question shani that i ask everyone what according to you does it take to be a resolute woman um so actually like especially women i like that word over here because uh, you know we women are such givers we uh, yeah. it is literally in our somehow it is just in our dna is like i see my mom uh, if there's a leftover food from last night she would eat she would not give anyone else she would be like no no you eat fresh i'll eat this you know women are such givers but um so that is why it's even more important to first of all first of all take out time for yourself yeah. and then have goals have it's not like if you are a married woman and a housewife it's not like you can't have goals or it's it's just over and it's all about the others in the family uh have goals take out time for yourself and uh, just uh, you know stick to your routine i think that's like really really important um so yeah i mean uh, especially for women in india being resolute is absolutely absolutely important i love that i love that and what a fantastic way to you know conclude this discussion think about yourself first we ignore that the most Um, yeah. That's a really, really good way uh, to end the episode. Thank you so much for coming to the show, Chani. I appreciate you. I appreciate the work that you do, and keep inspiring and stay resolute. Thank you so much for having me, Subarna, and it was lovely, lovely talking to you. I hope you liked this episode. For more content to empower your mindset, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and do share this with the resolute women in your life. Take care and bye bye.